And good morning, everybody, and um, thank you for joining us this morning from near and far. And also thank you to Collins for inviting me to um, talk to you this morning about thinking and working scientifically. And as a starter, I'm just going to ask you to look at this young learner, this photograph of this year young learner and to write in the chat box what you think she is doing. As you're writing in the chat box I'd like you um, to think if you've got some pen and paper next to you because you might want to write down a few, a few ideas as we go through the webinar um, and also for thinking of questions that you would like to ask at the end. So we've got here, someone's put exploring nature, playing, trying out an experiment, uh, planning to collect rainwater, oh. or exploring liquids. That's great. Yes, I like the idea about the rainwater, and but also I specifically like what you're saying about planning, okay, because this is what thinking and working scientifically is about. In fact, here in this actual experiment, what she's doing is actually causing a chemical reaction that would look as if a volcano is going to erupt. She is using washing up liquid and the bubbles uh, from the washing up liquid are mixed with bicarbonated soda and um, vinegar and so it's causing a chemical reaction as if a volcano is reacting or, or erupting. What is important here is actually she is thinking about how to carry out the experiment and thinking perhaps possibly about the risks that may be involved and that's why she's got those goggles on. So that is just a very simple experiment here to get you started for this webinar this morning. Let's think today about the outcomes from the webinar. Um, we're going to explore the new skill strand from Cambridge curriculum, thinking and working scientifically. We'll give you plenty of ideas um, on how you can incorporate this new strand into your teaching and learning as your learners progress up through the curriculum. And as Charlene said, you will have plenty of opportunities at the end to ask questions. So I can gain a fair understanding of where you are at the moment with thinking and working scientifically. I'm going to ask you to complete a poll. How comfortable do you feel with this new strand? If you could now rate yourselves between one to five, one, if you think that you're very relaxed and laid back. And then at the other end of the scale, five, if you're pulling your hair out and you feel incredibly stressed about introducing this new strand into your teaching. So we'll just give you a moment there to actually fill in the poll before we carry on. Okay, so I'll leave it up there for a few more seconds. Do click on the poll button at the bottom of your screen and take a vote. Okay, I will end that there and I think I will share the results. It looks like quite a few people are in the middle or quite relaxed actually. Okay, that's good. Okay, well, I'm really going to be thinking about uh, how I can shift you up the um, scale so that you're going to feel very relaxed about it by the end of this webinar. Um, yep, there. So this is my little picture about thinking about if you're feeling really relaxed and laid back like a cat or if you're actually pulling out your hair. I'm going to ask you to take a step back here about thinking and working scientifically um, and just to look at the curriculum or an overview of the science curriculum from Cambridge International. 
I find that this is a very useful diagram um, to illustrate the approach that Cambridge assessment have taken in terms of teaching and learning science. In science, there are three categories of strands, all of which support learners in their understanding and investigating natural phenomena and providing a foundation for developing future scientific skills, knowledges, knowledge and attitudes. So first of all, one, we've got a skill strand and that is called here thinking and working scientifically. Two, we've got the content strands. And here we've got biology, chemistry, physics, and earth and space. And then lastly, we've got the science in context strand. Science, whether it's the content of a physics lesson, biology or chemistry or earth and space lesson is best learned in context. Now here, the wavy green line represents TWS or thinking and working scientifically. This strand was previously known as scientific inquiry skills in the previous Cambridge curriculum. What is good about it is going to, it is going to bring the content of biology and physics and chemistry and um, earth and space alive. It's actually at the core of the curriculum. It underpins everything that we know about active learning, metacognition and assessment for learning. What really TWS is doing is actually moving the learner to the center stage. We know that learners learn the content best when they are in the context of science, when they are actually carrying out investigations, when they're actually thinking and working scientifically. Now, TWS does not have to be in every lesson, but if you think about it, it would be quite difficult to have a lesson without it because we're always thinking and we're always working. So now I'm going to look at actually the substrands that make up thinking and working scientifically. And we can think of it in terms of a little diagram like this. Now, Thinking and working scientifically covers three approaches to learning and teaching science. It covers models and representations. As well as scientific inquiry skills, as well as practical work. You may already be familiar with the concept of working scientifically, but getting your learners to think in terms of the learning objective is actually new. As I've said already, it's getting our learners to be more active, then making their own decisions. And it's shifting the emphasis from the teacher doing all the thinking and the working to the learner actually doing it. Now, in the new curriculum, scientific, scientific inquiry is broken down into very logical steps. We have got the purpose and planning or making plans for experiments and then actually carrying out the scientific inquiry itself. And then the evaluation that happens or needs to happen after an experiment or investigation. This was all there beforehand, but now it's just a lot more granular. We've also got a new substrand, which you can see here right at the top, which is called models and representations. And there's going to be more about this on this slide here. 
I don't know about you, but when I first heard about models and representations, I immediately thought about Fred the skeleton lurking in the back of the cupboard, who might need dusted down, dusting down so that we could teach the, um, the bones of the body. Or I thought about um, a drawing of the solar system, or I thought about um, learners copying out from the textbook the parts of the flower and then having to label them. It's actually a bit more about it than that. Models and representations is asking the learners to engage with the model and thinking about why we use them. Um, and why we use them is because we want to use models in science to help us think about objects, systems and processes. We're going to be raising learner awareness to see that models are not perfect and perhaps the model that we're using um, may need a bit of adapting. So you will see later how we can look at some models that learners make and might need some adapting after they've carried out the experiment. Um, I'm now just going to talk to you quickly about scientific inquiry skills and about the different types of skills that go into making up the three substrands that we've got within the new um, strand, thinking and working scientifically. For the Cambridge curriculum, from stage three onwards, we introduce learners to the five main types of scientific inquiry. We look at research, and that is when they're using secondary resources of evidence to answer questions or to actually carry out some research. We look at fair testing and so that means it's identifying the effect of changing one variable on another while attempting to keep all the other variables constant. We look at observing over time observing or measuring how one variable changes over time. We look at identifying and classifying. Um, here we're looking so that we can distinguish between different things. We look at pattern seeking, so it's identifying patterns in measurements and observations. So again, we can look for correlations, um, especially important when we cannot control all the variables. Clearly, we need to get used to all these different types of inquiry. If we look here at this photograph of a worksheet, of a learner who observed the moon for a week. Could you write in the chat box, please, what scientific inquiry skills you think they were using? Okay. So put, put your answers in the chat box. Um, you've got observing over time. So observation is the key one that they've put here. Yep, um, that's and right. pattern seeking as well. Lovely. Yes, you. So yes, you're right about observing over time. Um, here they were given a week to do the um, observation, and then also the pattern seeking because they were looking at the waxing and the waning of the of the moon, and about how the same pattern is um, made for when the moon is becoming fuller to actually when the moon is decreasing in size. That's great, so thank you. Um, clearly, we need to get used to these different types of um, scientific inquiry. And I imagine 
what might be going through your minds is actually how can we carry out these observations over time don't we have time commitments um, that we can't always um, be observing something growing we don't have that physical time we'll talk more about that later if not um, with the materials i show you but also with the question and answer what i do think or and i actually know already is that learners will love knowing which scientific inquiry skill they're using when they're carrying out investigations and I would get them used to from a very young age to use your, to using those terms is it research we're doing is it fair testing is it pattern seeking right from the word go I'm going to look closely now at one of the substrands which is called purpose and planning so when we are planning an experiment or an investigation we want to think about the what and the why and we want to talk about it with our learners so we want our learners to engage with what they've got in front of them by asking plenty of questions about the world in front of them, around them. So here, for example, um, we are asking our learners to make predictions. So using the template that you can see here on the right, we are helping our learners to see how plants absorb water. And then we're helping them with a frame as well or just filling in the blanks about how they think the um, colour of the plant will change by adding red colour into the bottom or into the vase. On the left here I've used a cartoon with that young scientist asking or thinking about plenty of questions or thinking about the risks that they'll be taking when they're going to be carrying out an investigation. So we want to be doing a focus on the planning of an experiment before we actually carry out the scientific inquiry itself. And this is here where the fun really does start but we do have to spend some time thinking about how we're going to plan an experiment. Looking at this young scientist here, we want to be able to engage and motivate and excite our young learners to carry out an investigation, but we want them also to be able to carry out that investigation safely. Also, we want them to know which measurements to use and to know which equipment to use in an investigation. Then we want to train them how we're going to record the observations, like for example, you saw with the waxing and the waning of the moon, and also how to record the measurements that they used when they were going to carry out the experiment. It's all really important about the process of working scientifically. Lastly, we're looking at analysis, evaluation and conclusions. At primary and lower secondary level, are we expecting our learners to be able to analyse data like this? I'd hope that out there, you're all shaking your head wildly saying, no. Okay. We aren't expecting them to do that at all. But, and I say big but, at primary and lower secondary, we are providing the foundations so that they can later in their studies do so.
So here, with the analysis and evaluation and conclusion, they are identifying the patterns and making conclusions, as well as presenting and interpreting results. So, for example, here, you can see from this photograph of a young learner who was carrying out an investigation to see which one of his vehicles went down a ramp the quickest. And you can see that he drew up, and this was all by his own doing, a table where he lined up the cars that went down the ramp the quickest. And these are the ones here of the three cars on the left hand side. So he carried out the experiment under guidance. Then he recorded his results. More importantly, he could actually talk about it. Now, before we move on, there's time for a quick quiz, okay? So please, in your chat box, could you write in how many substrands are there for thinking and working scientifically? We've got four. That's brilliant. Okay. And then to win a new chemistry lab, uh, such as you can see here, okay, and this is a joke, okay, um, please could you tell me which four they are? Just, you could just use abbreviations. And we can interpret the abbreviations. So what are the four strands that make up thinking and working scientifically? Models and representations. That's great. Thank you. We've got hypothesis. Okay, so that would be under which scientific inquiry one would you want to put hypothesis under? Would you want to put it? No, I'm not going to say this is more coming through. Yeah. So we've got scientific inquiry, carrying out analysis, evaluation and conclusion. Um, Lovely. And then there's one more. Remember the what and the why. Identifying and classifying. Yeah, that's that's great. Purpose and planning. Brilliant. So it's the purpose and the planning that we're, we're really um, keen on because that wasn't perhaps emphasised enough before. So, yep, yeah, thank you. And then what are the scientific inquiry skills? You've already mentioned it, actually. Um, and we sp you spoke there just now about observing over time. That is one of the scientific inquiry skills. I think you already said pattern seeking. Fair testing and Excellent. research. Excellent, thank you. Fair testing, research, identifying and classifying. And then that, that is it. So now for the next part of the webinar, we're gonna be looking at, um, first of all, progression of learning, and then thinking about how we can teach um, thinking and working scientifically. A word, first of all, about progression in learning, okay, because I feel that this needs a special mention. The progression of the learning objectives within thinking and working um, scientifically strand, or in fact, any other of the strands for the science curriculum enables the development of knowledge, understanding and skills through the spiral approach to learning. 
by revisiting and engaging with topics and skills at deeper levels and in different contexts. And it's really important to think about the different contexts because then they can apply their knowledge and their understanding in different ways. So when we approach this in the um, different stages as our learners move up through the curriculum, they will be deepening their knowledge. What's really important as well is that Cambridge and Collins materials have um, been revised so that the transition between one stage, and that is here, the primary stage and lower secondary, is made as smoothly as possible. And so there's got not going to be a huge leap in understanding or in knowledge for your learners when they go from primary up to lower secondary. So I just thought it would be um, important just to have a quick word about that and that Cambridge have addressed this and this is reflected in the materials produced here by Collins. So we're asked now to explore teaching and working scientifically. And I've put up here a, fo of a photograph of a very expensive um, science lab. Do we need specialist equipment such as what you can see here? I would hope again, you're saying, no, we don't, okay? Yeah, that's a big no in Excellent. the chat box. Okay. Um, and that is um, a resounding agreement from us and also from the resources that have been de developed with Collins is that everything you see are easy, easy to carry out experiments, whether you're going to do them in the science classroom, whether you're going to do them just in the normal classroom, um, or if many of you are teaching remotely at the moment, whether you can set up these experiments for learners to do by themselves. Some might need a bit of guidance, parental guidance at home. So it doesn't matter what equipment that you have. So over the next few slides, I'm going to be showing you um, some teaching ideas. I'm also going to be asking you to think of the thinking and working scientifically um, substrand that I'm exploring as well. And I'm going to show you that these ideas actually come from the primary and lower secondary um, series from Collins. So here, and you can write in the chat box if um, you see the diagram quickly, let's think about the substrand thinking and working scientifically. We've got here an extract from stage five book and um, student book. And we've got a picture of the um, stomach or the working of the human stomach. Which substrand do you think we're developing, first of all? Models and representations. Thank okay. you. Lovely. Yeah, okay. So here in the learner book or the student book, the student is given a very simple model of the stomach. And as you can see, there's very little teacher or parental guidance is needed for your learner to engage with that actual model. You can see that you don't need a ready-made model. And in the uh, teacher guide, there's going to be a lot of support how you could use a 
model if you do wish to demonstrate this so that learners can understand or develop the understanding in order um, for learners to meet the learning objective. Then learners can carry out the experiments themselves either at home or in the classroom following the guidance that you can see here that is in the workbook. And as you can see here, here is a photograph of what a learner actually, he took it one stage further. And instead of making, um, or as well as making the fruit bowl, he actually put um, slices of banana with different colored liquids inside a plastic bag. So we are not just getting our learners to look at the model, we're getting our learners to also make a model. And here they're going to be planning scientific inquiry skills as well as, well as carrying out the experiment. Now you may wish to add as we're going along to the chat box, other ideas that you have to explore the content strand of the workings of the human stomach. And, you'll, and if you do add the ideas, think also about the different substrands that you may be asking your learners to develop when you are teaching that too. So next, I've got a, another experiment that we carry out, and this is from the chemistry strand. Uh, this is from stage three, and we're asking our learners to pour different liquids and for them to think about actually which liquids here are fast pouring and which ones are slow pouring. What you have has been suggested in the teacher guide, okay, and you have got the actual experiment um, is going to be either carried out by yourselves or by your learners, and they're asked here to record the results. So which actual substrand or learning objectives do you think that we are covering here by using this table? Recording and analysis. Yeah, thank you. Okay, lovely. Yeah. So that is it. Yeah, that kept flashed up. So I may have preempted that. Okay. But that's just really getting you to think of now the actual substrand. Now, if you were doing this at home or getting your learners to do it at home, you would have to perhaps take it one stage further and think about how can you get them to carry out this experiment or how can you get them to actually give you the evidence of them carrying out the experiment. Um, please do use the chat box to answer how you would actually use um, evidence from the home environment. So we've got someone has said plan a fair test, record <laughs> a video. Lovely. Um, yeah, that's a good example. That is great. Yeah. Photos. Yep. Photo um, exactly. Yeah, taking photos of the results. Lovely. Yeah. So it's not just the evidence that you can see here in the workbook, but also asking your learners to send in photographs of themselves having actually carried out the experiment. Okay. And so this is really good because by getting them to take the photograph, they're actually able then later to talk about it. And so it's showing them that they are working scientifically. Next, I've got here the water cycle. Now, this is actually new for the Cambridge curriculum. Um, 
you may have taught the water cycle in um, a, another subject area, but now it's been moved into science under the earth and space strand. Yeah. What I'd like you to think of though, is which substrand from thinking and working scientifically are we developing? And it is pretty straightforward. So what do we have here in the chat box? Model and uh, representation. Yeah. Someone has put here. Okay, that's great. So we can get at one stage our learners to engage with the models and representations. Yes, they could be drawing the same thing. We could also take it one stage further and ask our learners to um, make their own model of the water cycle and carry out the investigation itself so that they are developing the substrand um, of planning, carting out, apologies, analysis, evaluation and conclusions. So you can see here from these just four or five different experiments that come from the student books, how, yes, it can be taken one stage further um, to actually carrying out the investigations, but we're getting our learners to actually engage with the experiments and for them to be able to think like a scientist and work like a scientist. Now, I'm often asked as a teacher trainer about how we can differentiate um, our teaching and then especially with thinking and working scientifically. In many ways, thinking and working scientifically and differentiation is a pot of gold for you because by its very nature, you can choose to carry out the same investigations with your learners and you as a teacher can vary the levels of independence. So for example, here in the student book, we have got different activities for different levels of independence of our learners. Um, so, you can actually plan how much support your learners are going to actually need following the guidance, not just in the student book, but in the teacher guide too. And in terms of Collins materials, all the lessons provide you with differentiated activities uh, and they grow in demand and in complexity and because you know your learners best you can choose which one or which ones you're going to actually teach with your learners. The next question I'm often asked is about language support for learners who may not have English as a first language and how are we going to get them to think like a scientist and to work like a scientist when English doesn't come easy to them. Um, we now are asking our learners to um, engage a lot more with the science. We are going to get them to um, actually think, work and talk with each other. And by this very process of talking with each other, they're actually going to develop those scientific and working skills as a scientist. In the books, we have got frames, um, which are like language frames within the workbook. And in the student book, we've got plenty of diagrams, plenty of visuals, plenty of photographs to actually support the language development. 
We've also got lots of graphic organizers or templates as well, mind maps for our learners to use and to fill in when they're planning out experiments. And then also we've got teacher questions. Um, I'm now going to actually go and show you what I mean by the teacher questions. So here, by using careful questions, and they have been thought of already by the people who wrote the, um, the books for the science series, about which questions to ask at which particular stages of an investigation. It will allow us to think as teachers to find out where our learners are and where we can take them next. So then they are thinking like a scientist. Here from the um, workbook, I've got two examples of models or frames that our learners can follow. So you can see we have got um, investigating how sound levels will change. So we're getting them to plan before they carry out the experiment. They are also making predictions and they're going to be given here the language frame or the question which will help them make the predictions and then also comparing results with each other. Now you may wish to give a bit more support as well by providing perhaps some model answers as you're talking through this particular worksheet with your learners, you could be giving the written answer up on the whiteboard as you're actually doing the um, worksheet itself. So as a quick recap, um, I'm just going to say that the new curriculum framework from the Cambridge curriculum has got science at its core. It's got the learning objectives across the four content strands. We got the science in context that links everything. And then we have got the thinking and working scientifically, which it enables your learners to explore the content. With learners using the Collins materials, they'll discover how science is present in their everyday lives. And using the inquiry activity based approach, we're going to ensure that our learners are thinking and working scientifically, like we can see here with this very young learner. She is the one who thought, okay, I'm going to have to protect my eyes because I know I'm going to cause a chemical reaction. So with some careful questioning, we actually got her to think about what she needed before she carried out the experiment. So let's go back now to the poll that we had at the very start of the um, webinar. And where would you place yourself now? I was interested that most of you placed yourself in the three to four category. And I'd hope that you're now feeling like a well-fed cat and wish to lay back and enjoy the rest of the day. Um, so please do fill in that web, um, the poll now before we move on to some questions. Okay, I'll just leave that up there for a few more seconds. Do get voting. And also thinking about some questions. Yes. Okay, and I'll share the results. It looks a lot better than the beginning of the webinar. Excellent. Brilliant.
Well, that's great to know that you are feeling very relaxed and quite relaxed about it. Uh, and thinking actually it isn't um, wildly different from what you've been doing before. It's perhaps sharpening some of the scientific inquiry skills, um, but you have been doing it already before and it's just been grouped together under new um, learning objectives. But don't worry about the um, actual mapping out. Cambridge has done all that hard work for you, as well as Collins um, and the materials. Just before we go on to our question and answer session, I'd just like to show you a quick um, few resources um, that you may wish to refer to. Um, when I said Cambridge just then, I meant Cambridge International. You can always go on to the Cambridge International website and you can get some support for what to do when schools are closed, or you can just get some general resort, um, support about the updates to the new curriculum. You can also look for further ideas for carrying out experiments um, from the STEM organisation, as well as going on to um, BBC Bite Size. Uh, just a word of caution for the last two resources um, that I have um, put up there. These resources may not be linked or mapped directly to the Cambridge International curriculum, nor may they have been endorsed by Cambridge International, but it's something that you could refer to for extra ideas, as well as using the Collins materials. And I'd say that actually just using the Collins materials and the guidance that you're given there, you don't really need to do much more. So now we're going to go on to the question and answer session. I'd like to, before um, we go to a live discussion, I'd like to say thank you very much and how you can contact us with sending us a quick email or using Twitter or Facebook. So let's listen to the questions, please. Excellent. Thank you very much, Siobhan. That was a brilliant presentation and I think everyone has really appreciated it. They've been engaged and answering all of your questions throughout. Um, before we get started, I just want to say, um, as I said at the beginning, we will be sending out a recording of this webinar. So um, do look out um, in your email, in your inbox for a recording. Um, we can also provide you with a attendance certificate. So that will also be included in the email that will come to you in a few days time. So let's move on to the questions. Um, we've had um, one, I think that was asked just before you went on to the examples, um, but I'll ask you anyway, are models and representations don't you think models and representations are quite abstract? Excellent. OK, and that's the whole idea, OK, is that by using something that is abstract, um, we are wanting our learners to engage with something that is abstract in a more concrete way. And you can do that, as you saw, like with the model of the human stomach, in the book, yep, it's quite dry, it's quite abstract, but then you can see the example that was given in the, in the um, textbook about um, using a plastic bottle and a pipe, or you can use something as well, getting your learners to make their own model, then they're engaging with the processes that go on in our digestive system. Uh, there are going to be some models that are, are always going to remain more abstract at a particular level or stage in your students learning but the curriculum is actually based around at the moment using things for primary and lower secondary that are things that the learner can engage with with what's around them so it's a great question thank you Excellent. Thank you, Siobhan. 
Um, another question that I think I should be able to answer for you, um, it was, when will the books for students and teacher resources be available? And I'm guessing that is about the new, the, set, the new edition of our Collins International Primary and Collins Lower Secondary Science books. Um, and we do actually have some of them available now. Uh, some of them will be available early springtime. So do keep an eye out. If you'd like to um, sample some of the books um, that Siobhan was showing on the screen, do give us an email um, and we will be able to send you some sample books, either physical copies or ebook copies as well. Um, another question we've got is, um, does Collins provide separate worksheets for different uh, levels, so weak, average and above average students in the teacher resources? And I know you showed some photocopy master sheets in, from the teacher guide, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, so some of the worksheets are clearly differentiated, um, but we wouldn't like to say uh, weak, um, average and strong students. Um, we do use a process in the teacher guide um, of symbols for graded activities or differentiated activities, and it's up to you as knowing your learners best which ones you think that you should be using. In terms of the worksheets, it's more the questions within the worksheet that could be differentiated. But having said that, um, I'm pretty sure that there are some worksheets that may just be aimed at one particular level of student, but it's not every single worksheet. That's right. And then another question was, are they editable? And yes, we do have them editable as well. Um, great. The, sorry, there's one thing as well that we didn't say is about the fact that they're all of, or did you, I, if you did say it, I wasn't listening, um, apologies, um, but they're, they're all available as ebooks. Yes, as that's well. correct. Yeah. Um, another question we've got is, how do I still carry out investigations if I'm teaching remotely? Okay, uh, that's a really great question. Um, by modeling something, first of all, um, I would hope that you're doing this either on a live stream like we're doing now or on something that is, is recorded, um, such as using um, a software plat or a platform such as Loom. Um, by modeling it, and by making sure as you're modeling it, asking plenty of questions to engage your learner um, so that you are, and also that you can check their understanding. And then hoping, as we saw here with the science equipment um, experiment of pouring liquids, getting them to record their experiment at home and then to send it in. So it's bringing on the level of learning or the process of learning to a completely different sphere. Excellent. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you, Siobhan. Um, one last question and then we'll wrap up for today. Um, how can we assess thinking and working scientifically? Mm, that's a really good question. Thanks for that. Um, so let me think quickly. OK, um, I've par answered partially this already. OK, in the classroom. So in terms of like formative assessment, assessment for learning, by asking plenty of questions, um, getting the teacher to ask a question or getting the learners to ask each other questions, and us by gathering evidence from their planning, and you could see the worksheets that we had when they had to plan an experiment, and then by getting the evidence from the results and getting them to analyze their results, we are gathering like a portfolio of um, their understanding and whether they've met those particular learning objectives in, a, in that particular strand. Getting the right result 
isn't always what we're looking for, okay? But we are looking at how, a larger picture here, okay, about how they thought about the scientific process that they went through. Really good question. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Yvonne, for answering all the questions. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, if you are interested in watching more webinars like this, do log on to our website uh, and you'll be able to sign up to more there. And have a good day, everyone. Take care. Thank you. OK. And goodbye. Goodbye. Bye bye.